Massively multiplayer online games, one of the greatest genres ever created. Hundreds of games, thousands of hours, and millions of players. The online gaming world is busier now than it's ever been. And the range of games available means no matter what kind of adventure you want to have, you will be able to find it. But these games aren't without their flaws. So in this series, let's examine the seven deadly sins of MMO design. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Shrove Hayes. I've been playing and analyzing MMO games on YouTube for several years now and over that time I've come to notice some constants in the development cycle, small things that even big games can do, which really damages the overall experience. So let's analyse the fourth sin of MMO gaming design. Sloth, or lazy design. Before we begin, please consider dropping a like on the video or subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell so you don't miss a single future video. A massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. Right, let's begin. Sloth. Both a cute animal and one of the seven deadly sins, described as the reluctance to work or make an effort. We've all experienced the allure of being slovenly from time to time. You only need to look at the share price of Uber Eats during the pandemic to see proof that if we're given an excuse to have food delivered directly to us, we will take it. Sloth is the gym membership you bought but never use. It's the slow falling apart of a friend group as no one is really prepared to make an effort to keep it going. It's when the desire to do nothing defeats the desire to do something. So how do we relate this to MMO design? Well, the sin of sloth is all about not being bothered to do anything, not putting effort in. So from a design perspective, this would relate to the visual, audio or mechanical choices that games make that are uninspired, safe to the point of being forgetful, and generic. The ones that require no effort to actually think up, or the game mechanics which artificially inflate how long their game is because they can't be bothered to actually design anything else to fill the time. Sloth within MMO design, to me, covers the following. Palette swapped assets to show progression, an uninspired journey through predictable places, numerical increases without mechanical changes, and the absolute worst, time gating the content. So let's examine these. Now stick with me because the first three may be somewhat understandable due to the constraints of the genre and I will explain the pros to them but the last one is just unforgivable. First up, palette swapping. This is a time-saving feature in many mediums of design. The palette is the collection of colours that you're working with. Forests use mainly greens, swamps are all murky browns, and the sky is usually blue. So when you design an enemy, you will have a palette of colours for the enemy. Let's say you're making a goblin and you give them brown armour. Now, how could you create an entirely new enemy, a completely new experience for the player, without taking up any developer's time? Well, you can simply palette swap and change the colour. Now it's a goblin with red armour, and according to some developers, it's a completely different thing. This is a system used to create vast amounts of content for a game, and I use the term content here very loosely, by simply changing the colour on a base model and calling it a new object. The same sword, but in red. The same armour, but in blue. The same enemy, but with a different coloured hat. Cheap mobile MMOs are guilty of this all the time. Here is a wolf. Now here's the same wolf scaled up. Here's the same wolf, but in orange. They're all the same wolf, just palette or size swapped. It gets real boring, real fast. And that segues nicely into the second point of slovenly design, the uninspired journey. Quick, think of where your fantasy MMO should start. Where's the first zone? Did you immediately think of a forest or an outside natural area with some trees? If you did, then well done, you could also design Warcraft, or Terra, or Guild Wars 2, or Neverwinter, or RuneScape, or Rhizom, or Runes of Magic, or Mortal Online, or Shroud of the Avatar, Adventure Quest Worlds, frickin' horse riding tales, the list goes on. The MMO genre has been heavily fantasy inspired since the days of the island of Kesmai. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in the history of the genre, click on the video tag on screen now for a complete complete history, and while fantasy is an extremely varied genre, there are some predictable tropes, and the low level starting zone is always a forest or a quiet shire. Fantasy and sci-fi, two of the settings used most frequently in MMO games, give the creator infinite scope to create a magical world of their dreams. They have complete authority to design anything, and so, so many of them go to forest. Now, the mechanical design elements we'll get to, but sloth for design is based around the idea that designers or artists are 
unwilling to do any work to create anything unique and so instead take aspects of what already exists and is an established part of the genre and puts the pieces together in a new way. Maybe your forest has zombies in it. Maybe your forest has big spiders. It's still a forest. Palette swapping and uninspired locations are both superficial choices, however. The third problem is a mechanical problem. Numerical advances without mechanical changes. That means, is the game marking your progress by making the health of enemies go up, your attack damage go up, or the amount of experience you need to get go up without actually changing anything mechanical? Are your attacks still working in the same way, and are your enemies still reacting in the same way just with bigger numbers? Seeing big numbers in games is great. I love seeing damage numbers on stuff. It makes me happy to see high hits, but this is a test I often perform. If I turn those numbers off, and I have to focus only on the moment-to-moment -moment experience of combat, or the gathering, or the levelling process. Am I still enjoying the experience? If the base primal joy of seeing a bar fill up is removed, does the game still have enjoyable gameplay? Are the mechanics changing, and are things being added as I play more? This is also the sloth truth behind the go kill x quests or go collect x amount of quests, numerical increases without mechanical changes. There's no actual difference between killing one boar and killing a hundred boars, it's just the same thing 100 times, so remove the numbers and the experience bar filling up and the need to kill 100 and if the actual process of killing the boar is fun, then great, it's a good game mechanic. But if you're only doing it to make the number go higher because the game told you to, the developers will be fully aware of this. They will know the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is not strong enough by itself, which is why they need to add a tracker to keep you doing it. But you know what? I can forgive those three elements. Yes, palette swapping is a lazy way to create extra content, but I can understand why it exists within such a pressure-driven industry, and when you've made an awesome model, you want to show it off as many times as you can. I can understand the desire to start in a forest, because to a brand new player, and not the jaded veterans, this wouldn't matter. It's the first experience they have of it. It's still new and shiny to them. Plus, it's a trope for a reason. It gives a familiar and understandable place to begin, and grounds your adventure in reality, which then serves to enhance the magical fantasy once things really get going. I can even understand the trope of journeying to the king and going on quests because it's been kept in because players like that. I can even forgive the numerical advances without mechanical changes because MMORPG players have long been known to have addictive personalities and we just gosh darn love watching some little numbers get bigger. It's a way of padding out content and if you're a completionist then the process can be fun because you know you are working towards a trackable goal, so I can even forgive that element because it's so ingrained in the genre by now. But the one single element of sloth design I cannot forgive is time gating. The process of reducing or straight up capping the amount of progress a player can make within a given time frame. Let's say you're playing Neverwinter, and you're making some great progress in the Dread Ring campaign, only to be told, you've done all you can do today, come back tomorrow. And then you realise finishing this campaign will take 30 full days because of the daily limits. Or you're grinding boss kills in terror, but you realise you're limited on how many dungeon runs you can actually do per day. The purpose of time gating is twofold. Firstly, it serves to prevent the player from blowing through all the content in a single session, which we know many players would be able to do. Then they'd take to the forums and complain about how there was nothing to do. Secondly, and much more insidiously, it forces the player to form a habit, and habitual players are much more profitable for companies. There's a reason you get daily login rewards, because players who only play for a few hours a day have been shown to be more likely to spend money than players who blitz through everything in a solid week and never return. How many times have you decided to resubscribe to Warcraft and blitz the new expansion and then unsub, only to find you can't actually do that and completing everything in this expansion is going to take at least a few months due to time gating? It's designed that way. It's in the game's best interests to prevent you from enjoying it too quickly. The reason I hate this is because it's something only the MMO genre does. You cannot read a limited amount of pages of a book per day. You cannot only progress so far through a single player game in a week. You cannot only watch a certain amount of a movie 
within a certain amount of time. Imagine sitting down to a tabletop game like Magic the Gathering, Warhammer or chess and after 30 minutes having your opponent say right that's all we're allowed today, come back tomorrow for more game. Time gating is a tool, a design tool used by companies to prevent you from playing the game you enjoy because if you play it too much and enjoy it too quickly you will be more likely to finish it quickly, leave and go and play another game because the horrible reality is they haven't actually designed that much game for you to play. The reason I consider time gating the sin of sloth is because it only exists because the developers know there is very little else to keep you playing beyond the allure of you've almost done this, keep coming back every day for the next few days. It's negative design. It's holding content back from you and stretching it out precisely because there is nothing else there. Time gating is the act of limiting your player's enjoyment per day because it is only by limiting it that you're able to stretch out the content over several weeks. Sloth is being forced upon the players because the players cannot actually put the effort in even if they wanted to. If you're playing a game and you hit a time gate, ask yourself, why is this in the game? Is it to increase my enjoyment? Is it the best experience it could be? Is this actively improving how much fun I am having? Or is it in the game simply to make me come back tomorrow and turn the game from a fun, enjoyable experience at my pace into a habit of the designer's pace. One very annoying reason for this is when you log in, you often have to go through a login page and are also greeted with advertisements for the game's in-game shop when you arrive in the world. These cash shop adverts often show up at the start of your session and not halfway through, because if they did, players would get annoyed and leave the game. So the developers have a vested interest in making you go through the login process as many times as possible so they can show you as many shop adverts as possible. This is why in Neverwinter each character is time gated but the account as a whole is not so when you change characters they can load up another shop overlay advert. Time gating is preventing players from enjoying your game because you know if they weren't gated they'd plow through it in a few days and be left wondering where the hell the actual game is. It would then dawn on most players how little content there actually is in the game. This system actively punishes people for playing the game. Players will hit a wall and be told, no more game, come back tomorrow. This is demotivating for hardcore players who have lots of free time and want to play more. And it's demotivating for casual players who know if they miss a few days, they are now so far behind on progress and they cannot grind for a day or two to catch up. This system values nobody and is only focused on manipulating the players into becoming daily addicts. I cannot stand this process because not only is it mechanically boring, it's almost offensively protective. The game company is making a choice for you. You cannot play anymore. That is it. You have had enough fun today and you must stop. You've been sitting at the computer long enough. No more progress today. Go and do something else. I mean, RuneScape warns you when you've been playing for six hours, but at least they let you keep playing. If you include time gating in your game because you can't be bothered to actually design enough game to keep players engaged, or you want to turn the game player experience from a fun time at the player's choice to a daily chore and paste at the developer's choice, then you are setting yourself up for long-term failure. Hardcore players will not stand for being told they cannot play a game they love or make progress whenever they like. Casual players won't want to feel they need to make a certain amount of progress per day or be left behind. The time gating mechanic is only beneficial to designers who do not play games and is always detrimental to the players. You will never hear a player from casual to hardcore or between say, you know my favorite thing about the MMO that I play is how I can only make a limited amount of progress per day. It's placing a block on how much fun can be had per day and I absolutely hate it. Sloth, the sin of laziness, and for MMO design that means palette swapping, using generic fantasy tropes and numerical increases without mechanical increases to imply progression. Or the worst design of all, 
time gating your content to limit how much of your game players can enjoy per day to hide the fact that your game content is actually not that engaging or that varied. Thank you for watching. Another huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. And if you're enjoying the series, you can support the Patreon from only £1 a month. Or come chat to me live on Twitch or join the Discord. Links are all in the description below. Cheers for your time and as always, have a great day.